en débat. Senator Dalfon. Merci, M. le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Dear colleagues, let me offer a few comments to explain my support for Bill C-11. I would like to make it clear that I do not intend to comment on each and every provision of the law, nor on the proposed amendments. I will not com comment on the importance that the Broadcasting Act has had in supporting and developing Canadian culture, whether it be Francophone, Anglophone, Indigenous, or in languages other than the official languages or Indigenous languages. Others have done so before me with distinction, including our new colleague, Senator Cardozo, and a dean of our chamber, Senator Dawson. I will limit myself to an issue that I consider to be at the heart of the bill, that of the discoverability of Quebec and Canadian cultural products, on the, the known platforms, that is. At the outset, I would like to emphasize that I do not believe in the existence of a vast conspiracy of platforms to create a universal English language culture professing certain American values. According to a 2009 UNESCO report entitled 12 Years of Measuring Linguistic Diversity in the Internet, Balance and Perspectives, The share of English on the Internet has dropped from 75% in 1995, rather 1998, to 45% in 2005. Moreover, according to the Observatory of Linguistic and Cultural Diversity on the Internet, an observatory that is part of the International Organization of the Francophonie, in 2021, the share of English as a global percentage of web pages was apparently only 26.5%. This shows that the content of the web is becoming more and more diversified. The virtual warehouse, so to speak, is getting bigger and bigger and contains more and more products in different languages. Another piece of data that I remember as important is the Internet penetration rate. According to the Internet World Stats 2020 figures, only 35.2% of French speakers have access to the Internet, compared to 77.5% of English speakers, 70.4% of Spanish speakers, and 53% of Arabic speakers. This def deficit of Francophone access is explained by the low rate of Internet connection in Francophone Africa, which is currently only at 41 percent. However, it is predicted that by 26, 2060, rather, this rate will be 85 percent among Francophone speakers in Africa. As Senator Gerba has already pointed out, the future of the Francophonie lies in Africa. There is no doubt that the gradual connection of a few hundred million francophones in Africa should result in the production of many cultural and other products in French, which will increase the amount of francophone content on the internet, and I welcome this possibility. The existence of francophone content is the starting point, of course, for the consumption of francophone culture. If the internet has nothing to offer, if there's nothing in the bank, there will be no culture consumption. It should be noted, however, that if the share of English language content does not re represent the majority of available content, far from it, uh, that it does not represent the majority, far from it, this is not the case for content consultation, however. In fact, 61% of the most visited sites are in English, according to the W3 Tech's Web Technology Survey of September 2022. Another study tells us that 85% of listening time on Spotify is spent on 0.7% of the catalog. Several factors can explain the overconsumption of products in English, including 
English culture. One is the small number of Francophone platforms. This is why, in September 2020, in order to promote French language products, the member countries of the Francophonie, including Canada, launched the TV5 Monde Plus platform, a free flat platform, which is a sort of French language Netflix, in September 20. This was in September 2020, and this platform makes it possible to increase the online presence of French programs and films to enhance the influence of creative content from the international Francophonie and to reinforce discoverability of French language content on the internet. TV5 Monde Plus's French language productions are currently available in 196 countries. Another factor seems to explain the low consultation of products, especially French language cultural products, what we call platform suggestions. A study shows that on YouTube, 70 to 80 percent of the time spent on the site by Internet users is due to a product recommendation. That is, you view a product and you're recommended other products and you stay longer. As you know, these recommendations are made through the use of algorithms. No outside expert in Europe or North America has access to the details of the algorithm programming parameters since the platforms are considered to be professional secrets. There's no access to them. Given this situation, researchers have undertaken to measure the impact of these algorithms on discoverability of each platform's content. In a March 2021 report published by the Laboratoire de Recherche sur la Découvrabilité from Université du Québec in à Montréal, called Être ou ne pas être découvrable, translated to be or not to be discoverable, the following definition of discoverability is proposed, and I quote, The system of discoverability is a set of processes that structure and determine the possibility and capacity of the public to discover cultural products online. In other words, to find them or to have them presented to them without necessarily looking for them among a vast array of content organized by prescription and recommendation systems. End quote. This definition emphasizes the complex and multiple processes and dynamics that occur between an online consumer and a platform and how these processes impact an audi audience's propensity to discover products. This complex and dynamic process is somewhat similar to and greatly simplifies the product offering in your supermarket. Often, the product that sells the most is the most prominently displayed. The strategic positioning of this product means that there may be four or five competitors' products placed nearby the star product, but on the top or bottom shelves where most consumers will not necessarily see them. Of course, it can be said that the consumer is free to choose the product that is most prominently displayed at the appropriate height. But everyone knows that this positioning is a result of a supermarket decision, either because this product generates a higher profit margin or because the supplier has paid for an advantageous placement of the product. But if the legislature chooses to intervene to require fair placement of all products, it cannot seriously be argued that consumer choice is then diminished. Rather, it could instead be argued that it is increased. In the case of products in a distribution warehouse, the shelves are replaced by algorithms. Without these algorithms, a distribution center would become a sort of huge library without a filing system. These algorithms, which are increasingly sophisticated thanks to artificial intelligence, are able to recognize consumers, remember what they have consulted for months or even years, how much they are willing to pay, and so on. Wanting to anticipate the consumer's new needs, the algorithms present them with content. 
for some, this is a completely neutral operation that provides the result desired by the consumer, even if the algorithm parameters are not verifiable. Therefore, interfering, interfering rather, with the algorithm or even obtaining details about its parameters is a threat to freedom of choice. This is what I've heard in several speeches over the last few days. This viewpoint assumes that the algorithm and its artificial intelligence are perfectly neutral and able to anticipate users' needs. It assumes that there is no possible cultural bias in the complex programming that underlies these algorithms. And, of course, it also assumes that there is no programming to increase clicks and viewing time and related revenue. Unfortunately, investigations and relevations that have occurred from time to time, mainly from the U.S., have undermined these premises. Hence, the decisions of the European community in several countries to regulate the product offer, offer by platforms in order to perfect, protect rather their specific culture, the countries, that is. The need to do the same in Canada for French-language cultural products was demonstrated in the public scientific report of March 8, 2021, which I just spoke of, by the aforementioned Research labor Laboratory on Discoverability. It concludes that there are barriers to discoverability and highlights the following findings. One, there is no Quebec rating on Netflix, iTunes, YouTube, etc. Two, there is very low presence of Quebec audiovisual content, which explains in turn why algorithms cannot promote their visibility. For example, none of the 29 Quebec films produced in 2016 was found on Netflix. As for the 29 new releases at the time of the search, 10 were found on iTunes and 19 on the paid platform of YouTube. Three, there's a relative lack of streaming of Quebec films and series on transnational programs. Four, new platforms such as Disney+, Plus, Amazon Prime, and Apple TV integrate little or no Quebec audiovisual content. Five, if most lists of new music from Quebec are not present on the platforms, they are not uh, are present on the platforms, rather, they are not very visible, not often recommended, and the situation worsens when the music is not a new release, even if it's a past hit. Six, when it comes to music streaming, tests conducted from March to August 2019 revealed that none of the premium streaming services met the very specific expectations of the reference audit auditor used in the tests. Seven, the platforms do not provide details of content consumed in Quebec or the consumption of Quebec content. In conclusion, both the platform contents and the reference algorithms have resulted in poor, poor results for Quebec culture. In this context, it is only legitimate to want to regulate Quebec rather, and Canadian content on these platforms, as well as this, the discoverability of Quebec and Canadian cultural products that are stored them, on them. And what I'm saying for French language products applies also to Indigenous language products and English language products. This is why I support C11, which will force the requirement of Canadian content and require that the algorithms allow them to be discoverable. Thank you for your attention.